the Peruvian government is waging a new war. They are fighting illegal miners, sifting the earth for the world's most precious metal, gold. Illegal mines have turned forests like this to this. A Univision investigative report reveals that narco-traffickers are now in the gold business. In Peru, which is the largest cocaine producer in the world, gold has now surpassed cocaine as Peru's largest illicit export. Queen Kepes wrote a report about illegal gold mining for Verite, a group that tracks global supply chains. Verite's report found slave labor conditions, human trafficking, and other criminal activities in Peru's gold mining industry. The Peruvian government recently said that 60% of all crime could be linked to drug trafficking and illegal mining in Peru. And they lumped both of those together because both of them generate a huge amount of crime and violence. Peru is the fifth biggest gold producer in the world, worth $10 billion a year. But very little of that money trickles down to Alberto Perez, who works the dirt in this illegal gold mine in a protected area of the Amazon called Madre de Dios. We start working from 6 in the morning until the following day. We work 24 hours. Here, miners have clear trees to extract the gold out of the mud. The sand flows down slowly here and it leaves the gold behind. Alberto is just one of more than 30,000 prospectors who have marched to this region of the Amazon with the hopes of striking it rich. And the miners have left a devastating mark. Nearly 370,000 acres of the Peruvian Amazon has been destroyed. Illegal gold mining's toxic companion, mercury, has left an even bigger footprint. There is an invisible aspect, which is the contamination with mercury of the waterways and the ecosystems of the region. Luis Fernandez is the director of the Carnegie Amazon Mercury Project. They discovered that mercury has seeped into the rivers and worked its way up the food chain. What we found through testing the hair of more than a thousand people is that the residents of Malios are highly contaminated with mercury. 76% of the population of Madre de Dios has mercury levels above World Health Organization maximum limits. Mercury is a toxic substance that affects the brain and nervous systems, but Alberto says he's not affected. I'm 54 years old. I've been working in the mines for 20 years and I've never felt sick. I'm as lucid as a 20-year-old man. Alberto says he can earn up to $900 a week, much more than he would as a taxi driver. Most of the profits in these mines end up in the hands of the gangs that own the pumps and machines. In Madre de Dios, really, it's controlled by large familial base groups, which you know could really con be considered criminal organizations. There's evidence that people engaged in criminal activities, like narco-trafficking and terrorism, are involved in illegal gold mining. Tania Quispe is the director of Peru's equivalent of the IRS. We know that 20% of the gold exported in 2013 is illegal gold. The Peruvian government is showing its commitment to stop illegal gold mining with force. But prosecutors have only sent a handful of illegal miners to prison. Illegally mined gold is melted with legally mined gold and flows virtually undetected to Switzerland, Canada, and the United States. In 2013, 
the Peruvian special prosecutor for money laundering seized $11 million worth of gold from a mining company with a history of drug trafficking. A lot of the narco-traffickers use gold to launder drug money because they can purchase gold or interest in, in illegal gold mines or even legitimate gold mines. But that mining company managed to get the gold out of Peru with the help of a corrupt judge. You've heard about narco-politicos, we have the oro-politicos, we have politicians who are funded by gold, who use gold money to foment corruption. Security video obtained by Univision's investigative unit shows members of that mining company collecting $11 million worth of illegal gold. It eventually made its way to importers in Miami, Florida. This gold makes its way into a lot of our products. So whether that's jewelry or electronics, that cell phones, laptops, gold is in all of those. And so I think that there's really a need to expand the definition of, uh, of conflict minerals to include these types of issues in Latin America where gold is really fueling slavery, violence, corruption, organized crime.